Hi everyone. Thank you for joining me for today's nature journal workshop for beginners. My name is Maria and I'm the creative learning manager at the Carson City Library. I've created this video tutorial in honor of the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Every year on April 22nd, Earth Day marks the anniversary of the creation of the modern environmental movement, which began in 1970. I would have liked to offer this workshop to you in person, but given the current circumstances, I hope you enjoy this virtual tutorial instead. To begin, let's talk about what nature journaling is. Nature journaling is the process of recording your observations of the natural world, such as the animals, plants, and landscapes you see, and documenting these interactions on paper. It's a simple and effective tool which can help you improve your observation skills about nature through increased sensory awareness, discover new perspectives and ask questions about your environment, build a stronger connection with and create longer lasting memories of the natural world, or create a deeper appreciation of nature and have a more meaningful experience outside. While thinking of these different aspects, let's talk about the different reasons people create a nature journal, and let's try to identify what your personal goals are in terms of nature journaling. Do you want to enhance your appreciation of the environment? Do you want to improve your ability to identify animals and plants? Are you interested in documenting the life and behaviors of local wildlife? Or, do you want to de-stress or improve your mental health? Once you identify what your goals are, you will be able to better create a nature journal that reflects your desired outcomes. Now let's talk supplies. I've included a list here. When selecting or creating your first nature journal, you will want to keep some important factors in mind. For instance, where will you be using it? Will you take it when you go hiking? If so, you want to use an, a journal that is smaller and easier to travel with. If you plan to use it in your own backyard, you may want one that is larger in size. Also, think about how you want to design your journal. For example, do you want to use lined paper or blank paper? Or, depending on the art supplies you use, is there a type of paper that works best? Will watercolors work well on the same paper as colored pencils? These are just some of the things to keep in mind as you put your journal together. You don't need to know all of these answers immediately. I recommend testing different paper and notebook types, if possible, to determine what you prefer. You don't know until you try. If you don't have a notebook or sketchbook on hand, that's okay. I've included some instructions for how you can create your own. First, you can create the front and back cover. You can use construction paper or you could use thin cardboard if you want to have a harder cover. Next, select the paper of your choice for your journal pages. I noted loose leaf notebook paper or printer paper as options as those are more common to have at home. Use as many pages as you'd like, but I would recommend no more than 30 pages, especially if you're using construction paper for the cover. Lastly, Use a stapler to bind the pages together, or use a hole puncher or scissors to create three holes on the side of your paper and bind the paper together by tying string, thread, or yarn through the holes. This is a very simple way for you to create your own journal to use. It's always fun to add your own unique twist. Now, let's go over some of the things you can include in your nature journal. It really depends on what your personal goals are for this project, but hopefully this will help get you started. Here, you'll see a list of key points that I focus on when creating a journal entry. On the next image, you'll see I filled out this page using a dandelion as an example. First, I include what I'm observing. In this particular case, it was a dandelion, but in general, this could be an animal, insect, flower, tree, whatever you're focusing on in the moment. I like to date my entries as well. If there's a location I visit during different times of the year, it's helpful for me to see the differences of what I'm observing based on the season. The start and end time notate how long I stay in a particular spot to observe. 
This can be very helpful if you're interested in learning more about wildlife behaviors. For example, if you're observing birds in the morning, do they congregate in the same area or act in the same way in the afternoon? The location is helpful as well. I usually list the city and state of where I'm making my observations. If I'm on a hiking trail, I like to include that information as well. Observations include everything that I notice while I'm stationed at a particular spot. For example, if I'm observing a flower, I'll note details about the flower, but also if there are insects interacting with it, what is the weather like? Is it in a grassy area or sandy? Are there rocks or trees nearby? You can include any details that you want. Here are some examples of sketches that were done by Carson City Library staff. We have a sunflower, praying mantis, and a landscape scene from the Sea Hill Trail area. All of these were inspired by the Carson City area. As you can see, everyone has their own unique style and technique as you do. Now, let's practice sketching. You'll want to grab a piece of paper and a pencil to follow along. We're going to draw a monarch butterfly. This was my first time drawing this type of butterfly, and it was a bit of a challenge. As you'll notice, I didn't draw it perfectly symmetrical, but that's okay. Nothing is perfect, the imperfections add to the beauty. I've also included a photo for you to reference if needed. Thank you for joining me for my first virtual nature journaling workshop. I hope you enjoyed this class and learned something new. I've compiled a short slideshow of photographs that I hope will inspire you as you continue to observe, sketch, and add to your new nature journal. Feel free to email creativelearning at carsoncitylibrary.org to ask questions, find out about upcoming virtual programs, or share feedback on your experience. Have a great day.